Hi, my name is Derek Liu, and I'm here with a review of the trailer for Planet of Lana from the 2021 Game Awards. This is one of my favorite trailers from the whole awards show, and I think it's just a really well-directed, one-take trailer that has a really good dramatic arc to it, good dramatic tension, and has masterful command over where the audience is looking. By the way, if you're interested in finding your favorite game trailers in higher quality than what's available on YouTube, I highly recommend you look for the game's website and see if they have a press kit. So here is the website for Planet of Lana. You see they have their really cool um, it's like website with all these different graphics and this big scroll for sort of breaking down all these different points. But if you go all the way to the bottom, you'll see that here, next to their email address, there's this link for press kit. So this is made for members of the press who need access to high quality screenshots and video and that sort of thing. And you'll see this just links to a Google Drive. And then under this folder for trailer, you'll notice that they have a folder for their reveal trailer and then the Game Awards 2021 trailer, which they have here in 4K and 60 frames a second. So that's just a little tip for getting your favorite trailers in higher quality, which not every game will make this available, but might as well check it out. Okay, so let's just walk through this trailer one time and then I'll go back and talk about what I think works so well. This trailer it starts off with a bunch of logos, which as you know, I tend to say don't do that at the beginning of the trailer, but this is for the Game Awards, which means there's a captive audience, which means that it doesn't matter as much because people just can't skip ahead. We're not on YouTube to do that. And then over here is where they have this pedigree card because they have music from Takeshi Furukawa who worked on Last Guardian, which was a big point that they were making when this debuted. So this opening shot, um, we see this like tiny little speck in the distance. It looks sort of like a motorcycle sort of, or not a motorcycle guess, but someone riding something, but it's kind of piques that curiosity. Meanwhile, we see this like moon or planet in the background. And then we zoom in close or we track in close and we see that it's this person riding this like sort of mech spider or something like that. And then suddenly there's something in the distance. What is that thing? And then we're following this creature here. And then, oh my God, there's another one over here. What's gonna happen? And then uh, we keep riding around. Oh my God, they can fly. So the things are just building on top of each other and just sort of escalating. And then it almost hits the person. And then it crashes into this uh, structure here. And then, oh my God, there's another one. That's, that's gonna be out there to get them. But then it disappears. And then, oh my God, there's this thing in the distance. How did that get there? And then, oh my God, there are legs probably of these uh, these giant mechs here, and then there's another flying one, and then the spiders are back, and then there's more flying things, and then they're, 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 there's no hope for getting away, who knows? And then we go to slow motion, and suddenly we, we don't know what happens. Cut to black, planet of Lana, in off-Earth Odyssey. I'm not sure why they need the Off-Earth Odyssey sort of subtitle there, but it's still pretty cool. And then we have this little denouement here with this really cute cat-like alien creature. Just sort of nice way to sort of ease us out of the trailer uh, and pull at our heartstrings a little bit. At least if uh, you're a pet owner and this sort of uh, behavior really uh, speaks to you. And we have a year. Okay. And then of course we have uh, the different platforms website, social media, that sort of thing. Um, I tend to think that it's better to just keep things simple and have like one call to action, but um, I'd say this is pretty okay. It's very nicely designed and slate, very clean. You have like the social media stuff sort of isolated here and then wish list now on Steam. Then we have the Xbox uh, logos there. So I've gone back here and in my timeline, I have sort of mapped out all the things that happen in this trailer. So like I was saying, we have logos, then we have the pedigree. You know, this opening shot is like a nice intro shot where we're sort of getting oriented in the world here. It's like a desert world, um, or at least this part is desert. And then we have this like, you know, moon or planet in the background. So this already gives very like sci-fi vibes to it, which is kind of fitting it into a genre space because you know, on Earth, where we are right now, uh, presumably, <laughs> you know, you, do, you don't see this sort of thing. So clearly this has to be some other planet. And then, you know, in answer to our question of, hmm, what is that? You know, they let us stew a little bit on this shot here, sort of wondering what is happening. And then they answer our question by saying, okay, 
actually what you've been looking at this entire time is this person riding this like mech spider thing. And then after that is when they introduce this enemy in the background or antagonist, whatever you want to call it. And then here you'll see that they introduce a second one and things start building on top of each other. And then, oh, we find out that not only can they r walk or run, they can fly. So this is just building on ideas on top of other ideas. So first the idea is, okay, you know, we can move around with great speed. And then by the way, they're antagonists, robots. And by the way, there's more than one of them and they can also fly and hover. And, uh, you know, they, they sort of, are a threat here because they're, they're flying really close to their head, that sort of thing. And then they smash into this thing and pretty much as soon as that one's done, then another one shows up. And meanwhile, like literally this trailer is just layering on different things because before we have sort of stuff in the far background, like, you know, this, this giant thing here, and then of course the planet here, and there's this little uh, robot there. But then you know, we're layering things on by having things in the foreground that pass by really, really fast. So it is just sort of slowly introducing new things and it does it at a really nice pace so then that it's not overwhelming. And then it just has that nice sense of sort of building ideas on top of each other. And so this section here, we're looking at this robot this entire time until it falls down and then they outpace it. And it's almost like a magic trick here where suddenly we have this like spider robot in the back. It sort of feels like it comes out of nowhere. And I think it's just because this trailer has a really, really good direction as far as like the choreography and the robot. So take a look at this. So pretty much through this whole thing, you know, we're looking here. And then also when this robot passes by, you know, we're just looking at this robot the entire time because we tend to want to just look at the thing that is moving the most when it's on screen. So that's there. And then when it's done crashing, then we're looking over here. You know, we're looking over here. So, and the thing is this sort of foreground stuff here, this kind of obscured the reveal of the four-legged spider thing in the back. And also because we've been looking at this one in the foreground. So we didn't really have time to notice the one in the back. And even if we did, it wasn't really the focus. And because of this stuff in the front obscuring it, we couldn't really get a good sense of the scale. By the time that all the stuff in the foreground is gone, and we have this nice clean frame here where we have both just the, the player character and this thing in the background, suddenly, you know, this all reads very clearly and we're like, oh my God, what is that in the background? Did it show up out of nowhere? But no, it's been here the entire time. It's sort of like there's this video where there are people bouncing a basketball and the prompt you're given is like, just, just watch the basketball, count how many times it bounces or something like that. And if you do that, you might not realize that there is a the entire time that you totally didn't notice until you went back and they said, hey, look at the and it's like this really good trick of misdirection. It almost seems like this is an entirely different shot, but no, it's been one shot the entire time. This trailer does like sort of create individual shots within this one take uh, trailer. I made cuts into this trailer in the spots where sort of new ideas are created. You know, here it's like, uh oh, there's another one. Here there's what's that. And then, oh my goodness, these legs of the, the quad legged uh, spider thing are in the front now. And then there's this other flying thing. You'll see that basically the rate at which new things are coming on are really accelerating here. So this is kind of the climax of the trailer. Whereas in the earlier part of the trailer, things are more spread out and paced at a more leisurely way. But when they want to get really intense, then suddenly it's like one thing after another. And then, you know, after the legs, then this thing's flying in and then there's, oh my God, there's a whole bunch of them. And we're reaching this climax here. And then we cut to black and then the trailer chills out uh, and sort of gives us a little warm and fuzzy thing to look at as just a way to sort of calm down after this really intense series of events here. And so I went back and put little markers on the different sort of key hero frames of this trailer. And you'll see what I mean when I say that this, this one take trailer has a lot of scenes in it, which like really feel like standalone storyboards. So here we have this opening shot where we see that the main character is a tiny little speck on the distance. So we have the planet in the desert. And then the next shot 
is a close-up of them or I guess a sort of medium wide shot and then the next shot is oh my god what is that thing in the distance and then the next one is hey there's this another one in the front flying around after that it crashes and then we're dealing with another one with all these foreground elements after that is when we reveal the uh, sorry not four-legged it's, it, anyway it's a spider thing in the distance and then after that we realize that there is one very close by and then after that there's another flying robot here and then suddenly things are building up there are lots and lots of enemies here and then this other spider robot is about to attack and then it just about hits them and then at the end there is this cute alien cat-like creature here i don't have any inside knowledge about this trailer but i can easily imagine that these sort of hero frames are probably um, what they might have started with in order to plan out this whole trailer and then try to figure out the timing of when things happen and sort of adjust those things as they go uh, so, so then that they can make it into this one big take. So if I have any advice about making sort of like a one take sort of trailer like this, it would be to do what they did here, or what I'm presuming they did here, which was storyboard out the key moments and then figure out uh, the transition points and the, the amount of time spent on each moment. I mean, I'm not gonna say this is easy to do, but in as far as games versus like real time film production or something like that, it's probably a lot easier to adjust the timing of the individual parts until it has this nice, really good arc to it. Again, all the rules of trailer editing about sort of starting off sort of, you know, low and chill, and then, you know, accelerating, accelerating, getting more exciting, more exciting, and then, oh, then we sort of end here. Title card is over here. Climax is, you know, this whole part here. And then over here we have our, uh, you know, wish list on Steam and our sort of calm down moments. So yeah, that is the trailer for Planet of Lana from the Game Awards 2021. Really fantastic work here. Really good direction. They really know where they wanted people to be looking to either fake them out or just to help them follow the story. It's just a really amazingly well done trailer and I hope you learned something from this. If you enjoyed this video, I have a weekly newsletter where I send out tips about making game trailers every Sunday. Uh, and you can subscribe to that at GameTrailerTips.com. Otherwise, please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and thank you for watching.